This week, I'm really excited to finally sit down and share with you Alfie's birth story. And within what must have only been around five contractions, his head was out. Uh, that relief was immense. I found that noises were really helpful. I just felt such pride and so blessed when I watched Vinley completely embrace his little brother with such warmth, so much love, so much excitement and joy. Hello, I'm Pip and welcome to the Midwife Pip podcast, the home of expert information and real chats on all things pregnancy, birth and beyond. This week, it is just me joining you. Well, actually, I do have Alfie with me on my knee. So you may hear some baby sounds or he may decide that he's absolutely starving and need to feed while we're chatting. But we're going to roll with it because that is working mum life. And this week, I'm really excited to finally sit down and share with you um, our birth story, Alfie's birth story. Um, it's It's a strange one, I guess. I feel like it's going to be really cathartic and reflective. We've been on one hell of a journey since he was born. Definitely um, moments that, and I feel myself tearing up actually just thinking about it, but moments that I could never have prepared myself for. Um, for those of you that have followed me on social media and heard about our big old meningitis scare um, uh, and time with that, so yeah, it's um, a lot's happened, I think, since Alfie was born. So it's going to be really nice to take myself back to that day today and 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 kind of enjoy talking about it because it was an amazing time. I I adored my first birth. I absolutely adored this birth. It was magic, absolute magic. And I know how important filling your mind with positive birth stories can be during pregnancy in a really realistic way. So I always advise not just having one type of birth story in your head, actually listening to all sorts of birth stories, but I'm going to share my birth story with you today um, from when Alfie was born on the 14th of May, 2024. I honestly do feel blessed beyond words to be able to share the story of Alfie, my second son's birth with you. It was an experience that our family made the most beautiful and positive memories and truly is a day that we will treasure for the rest of our lives. And for those of you that have listened to the podcast or followed me, you will know that I have an ethos that all women should feel the way that I have done when I birthed both my babies, to feel strong, to feel listened to, to feel empowered and positive. And naturally, every birth will unfold differently with its own unique challenges and circumstances. But all birth, and crucially, if you're pregnant and listening to me today, your birth can be an incredible experience with the right support, information and preparation. And I know that consuming positive birth stories can be a helpful part of your preparation, which is why I've decided to share my first story and I'm sharing Alfie's one today as well. So 14th of May, 2024, the day that we welcomed our second perfect baby boy into the world, surrounded with calm, love and respect. And I look back at this day with so much joy birth experiences really do shape us as women, as human beings, lifelong. And I'm in awe of how strong and capable my mind and body are. So I woke up on the morning of the 14th of May with a light show and some kind of period type cramps. And I said to my husband and the midwife, who was kindly on call for us, that I thought I'd probably labour that night. I felt like my body and baby were making kind of some steps towards labor, but that it was really early stages. Um, and so I kind of went about my day as normal. I popped Finley off to nursery, had a morning of meetings. And on my final meeting of the day, I switched to my desk chair for my birthing board because I was just feeling a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and then I took myself out for a lovely five kilometer walk to see whether 
these tightenings would kind of pick up or just fade off. Um, and around lunchtime, they were kind of still there, but still really mild. So I thought I'd probably be able to pick um, Finley up from nursery. He was there till half three. Hopefully do his bedtime, get into bed, give him a big old squeeze um, and then go into established labour. That was my plan. I told my husband he was at work that day that things were starting, but I thought it'd be overnight. So stay at work, all fine. And it turns out that after almost 15 years together, he can read me better than I can read myself and said, no, Pip, I am coming home. So he came home and rightly so in retrospect, but questioned my self-diagnosis of non-labor, which is a brave move when your wife's a midwife. Um, and he suggested to me that my tightening seemed very regular and started timing them, telling me that they were lasting all around 50 to 60 seconds. But I just felt so calm and so comfortable and told him that it was really early and I felt great as I was. I had a movie on, my favorite candles burning. I was just moving and breathing in harmony with what felt good for my body at that time. Sensibly, we realized that I was probably not the best person to be doing nursery pickup at that point and bedtime. <laughs> so my husband, James, phoned our wonderful friend who agreed she would go and scoop Finley up when needed when I was in labor. Um, and we asked my parents to also make their way down because they were going to be a couple of hours um, to then take over, essentially. So I I then felt, I guess, relieved. I knew Finley was sorted. He adored all the people that were going to be looking after him. But I also felt this overwhelming rush of, and I feel emotional saying it now, but this overwhelming rush of sadness that I couldn't just give him like one more big squeeze and cuddle. Oh, I should have brought tissues into this um, because we have such a close bond. And this felt like, it felt like a physical pain that I couldn't see him again before bringing his brother into his life. And as I am now, I started to cry at that point. And naturally, James thought this was tears in response to the pain and suggested we move to the hospital. Um, and I explained that it, it wasn't labour that was making me tearful. It was that I already missed Finley. Um, and we phoned our wonderful friend and midwife who supported Finley's birth and plans to look after us again and updated her. I still felt great, super calm, super in control. But given that Finley's birth was relatively quick and we were about 40 minutes away from the hospital, James and our wonderful midwife encouraged me to slowly make our way in, reassuring me that I'd have a lovely birth environment to settle into when I kind of got there and then the car journey was just as uncomfortable as I remember it being with Finley's labor I was really focusing on my breathing we played some of my favorite music on the way into the unit um it was that standard slow waddle pause for contractions walk from the car trying to dodge the eyes of peering strangers I kind of closed my eyes and zoned out from the environment whenever a contraction came and then I spotted a colleague and friend on my way in and gave her a big hug which felt like a lovely kind of surprise bit of extra support I suppose and then we arrived into the birthing center at about five o'clock in the evening our room was beautiful with lovely lighting and then James set about organizing my water, my snacks, my music. And I felt this kind of sudden sense of calm, I suppose, for the for the journey ahead. Um, I chose to have a vaginal examination shortly after we arrived um, and I was five centimeters dilated at that point. Alfie was super, super low. I still felt really comfortable breathing through my contractions, which were really frequent and regular at that point. And what I found really interesting was the positions that my body just instinctively adopted were so different to the positions I adopted with Finley in my first labor. With Finley, I really wanted to be low down, leaning over a ball on the floor. Whereas this time, that just didn't feel right. It didn't feel good or instinctive. Instead, I wanted to be much higher up. So I used a rebozo technique quite often. Um, I also 
yeah, from the ceiling. So it's like a rope, for those of you that haven't heard of a rozo. It's like a rope that you can hang from the ceiling. Um, I also really liked kind of high up forward leaning position. So I did a lot of leaning onto my husband for support. And it's always so hard to talk about um, exact timings, I think, in labor, especially in your own labor. Time just seems to move really differently when you're in the moment. Um, but after a little while, I decided to choose my TENS machine. Again, I loved that last time and it didn't disappoint. I loved it this time too. Um, my husband helped me get it all set up. And then he popped out to get a coffee for our midwife and a really good friend. And it was all just really relaxed and really calm. I just walked around, moved really instinctively, um, made some different noises this time as well. So I didn't make kind of any noise really with Finley, but... As things started to ramp up this time, I found that noises were really helpful, mainly with the purpose of relaxing my shoulders and my pelvic floor. So I'm known to have a hypertonic pelvic floor or a tight pelvic floor. So kind of relaxation of that was really important to me and something I was really conscious of achieving in labor. And so I'd make this kind of hoarse noise with my lips, which I didn't plan on using, <laughs> But it relaxed my body with the contractions when I noticed that I was tensing up, tensing up my shoulders, my abdomen, and therefore my pelvic floor. So I really mindfully was making this kind of hoarse noise, relaxing my lips to, to relax everything and to keep reminding myself to relax into it and not to try and kind of fight the sensations that were happening or kind of tense up. And then I guess my kind of next strategy was to use the birthing pool um, as my kind of next coping mechanism. I stopped the tens because obviously water and electricity do not mix and sunk into the pool, which oh, just instantaneously. And I remember that feeling from last time, it really came back to me, just felt relieving. I loved water for Finley's birth. And so was really happy and really grateful to have this kind of option again. The pool was an upgrade from the pool that was in the birthing center when I had Finley, despite us actually being in the exact same room, which was really nice and nostalgic. And I guess felt like a sense of safety because I'd had such a great experience there previously. Um, the, but the pool this time had like beautiful mood lighting on the ceiling. So it reflected into the water. So I was just in this like really nice, calm bubble I suppose with the with the kind of beautiful lights around me and music and people that I felt really really safe and comfortable around it was all just very calm and quiet and relaxed and just how I wanted it to be in essence in the pool I was just I didn't really have a plan I was just moving really freely with contractions and leaning into my body's instincts which felt really helpful no pressure um, I also, again, something I didn't do last time, but felt right this time, um, in the pool, I asked my husband to count my contractions. So when one started, I would raise my hand, probably in quite a bossy manner, um, and he would count until I nodded that the contraction had finished. And it felt really helpful because each contraction lasted pretty much bang on 60 seconds at that stage. So I knew by the time we got to 40 seconds, the intensity would fade. Um, so I kept really focused on riding this wave and listening to his voice. As soon as the contraction came, breathe. I was just breathing, 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 listening to his voice, waiting until we got to 40 and then relaxing off for that last 20 seconds. Um, my waters broke in the pool not that long after I got in. Um, again, different. My waters went before labor started with Finley. And I felt kind of a subtle pop. And then because the amniotic fluid was completely clear, it was really difficult to tell at the time for sure. Um, and I didn't have any other vagina examinations actually after that initial one until he was born. So because he wasn't born in his sack, we kind of decided retrospectively that that kind of subtle pop that I felt must have been um, kind of when they did actually go. And then I spent probably around about an hour just moving in the pool, using that really helpful counting of my husband, which, yeah, I hadn't I hadn't pre-warned him that I was going to want him to do that either. So I, I think when I first shouted count, he was like, count, count what? <laughs> um, but he got there. He got there. He obviously understood what I was trying to get him to do because it worked really, really well. And it's probably something that I would 
if I do, if I am fortunate enough, if we do decide to have another baby, was definitely a tool that I really enjoyed having in my toolbox. Um, but just carried on doing that until I started to feel a need to push, um, which was probably about an hour, I imagine, after being in the pool. We really wanted to capture Alfie's birth on video because we accidentally um, captured Finley's. When Finley was born, one of the midwives that was in the room took a photo for us when his head was out because when his head was out, I kind of spun round and just sat there and smiled and um, everyone was having a bit of a, a giggle. So she took a lovely picture for us. But actually what we didn't realise was that my phone camera was set to live photo at that point. So we actually got a little mini video of the moment he was born, which we have treasured looking back on. And so I really wanted to do the same this time, but a bit more deliberately to make sure we got it. So our midwife suggested at this point that we got someone else in the room to do this for us. And I said, no, not yet, because I thought they'd just be kind of hovering around. I didn't think he'd come out just yet. And then I had my next contraction and quickly changed my mind and was like, no, he's coming right now. Get somebody in. Um, I could just suddenly feel a change. He moved down really quickly um, and just started to crown. I could just feel his head sat there. And within what must have only been around five contractions, his head was out. Uh, that relief was immense. The relief that he was coming, <laughs> that we'd made it. That, that I was almost there was just, yeah, incredible. And in in the video, I just kept saying, we're so lucky, we're so lucky. And thank you to everybody. Just that rush of oxytocin that I remember experiencing last time as well. Um, a couple of contractions later, I just gently guided our baby boy up onto my chest um, at 19.24 when he let out a beautiful cry and... Our hearts just once again fell in love. Um, it really was just this instantaneous rush of overwhelming joy. And in that moment, my heart just doubled. And all my all my worries about how could I love another baby as much as I loved Finley just vanished. I automatically just felt that I could love both these boys equally and it just, that just was no longer a worry that I'd worried about all my pregnancy it was just gone, it just vanished. It just wasn't there anymore. I just felt so much relief that he was safely in our arms and immense gratitude to have been able to bring him into our lives and in such a calm way, full of so much love and so much support from our amazing team who cared for us. Our wonderful midwife who also looked after us with Finley made me feel so safe, so relaxed, so respected, so comfortable, just making sure that all of my my wishes and my choices were honoured and met and that I was understood and heard. I chose this time to have a physiological management of my placenta um, because previously I had retained my placenta um, with Finley. So I just wanted to see whether it made any difference. And to be honest, I don't think I don't think it was that that made the difference because even when I was in the pool, there were just signs that my placenta was separating this time that weren't there with Finley's birth. Um, but it was a huge relief that my placenta also came away this time. Um, and I pushed that out on the bed whilst cuddling our precious brand new baby boy. Um, Alfie had his first breastfeed while I had a small tear repaired and then his little seven pound, four ounce self was weighed and snuggled skin to skin with daddy whilst I had a much wanted post birth shower. Alfie was smaller than Finley, which I was surprised about, although he was born um, about five days earlier than Finley, five days, I think five days earlier. Um, but I felt bigger. So I thought he was going to be quite big. And he wasn't. So that was just my indulgent ice cream in the third trimester, as opposed to baby side that was making me feel so big. Um, we then moved rooms so that another lady could use the pool. But actually, instead, we just sat in the sitting room of the birth centre on a sofa, which was really nice and cosy and ordered some pizzas in. Um, we ate pizza, Alfie fed constantly. And then we went home, snuggled into our own beds by half 11 that night. Um, and ready to introduce our littlest baby to our bigger baby in the morning, which was, oh, magic. I mean, if the birth didn't feel magic, the, the moment that the boys met each other was 
just incredible. Probably one of my favorite moments in my life so far. It was a whole, just a whole other incredible memory making moment in itself. And I think because it was one of the things that had been such a big concern of mine in pregnancy in that kind of one to two transition, I just felt such pride and so blessed when I watched Vinley completely embrace his little brother with such warmth, so much love, so much excitement and joy. And so that was it, the start. And, you know, a big, a big virtual glass being raised to our life as a four with double the chaos, but double the love. And I hope that listening to my birth story has been helpful, has been insightful. If you have got any questions or anything that didn't make sense, anything that I've talked about that resonated or you wanted clarification over, then please do drop me a DM on Instagram at midwife underscore pip. Um, and I'd be happy to help you. But I guess one of the things I really want to come across from from sharing my birth, which isn't something I ever thought I'd do because it's obviously so emotive and so personal and so private. But but one of the things I really want to come across is that no matter how you birth your baby, there is no right way, no best way, no wrong way to bring your little one into the world. But the way that you feel can be something you control it can be positive and it can be empowering. And the work that me and my expert team do in YPJ, and if you haven't heard of YPJ, it stands for Your Pregnancy and Postnatal Journey. And it's my exclusive uh, membership and course program that I dedicate all of my time to, that I love, that I run. <clears throat> Our ethos is that. It is that no matter how you bring your baby into the world, no matter how your pregnancy journey is, no matter how that postnatal space is, that we are a bubble of support and knowledge around you to make sure it's a positive time. Because like I said at the beginning of this episode, the way that you feel, the way that your pregnancy, the way that your birth, the way that your postpartum journey unfolds really does stay with you forever. You know, it's your birth is so much more than one day. It is the the shaping of you as a human. It is the creation of lifelong memories that you will treasure for the rest of your life. And to me, as a mother and as a midwife, it is absolutely paramount that that is positive and that that is an empowering experience for you. So if you are as much of a geek, I suppose, about pregnancy, birth and the postnatal period as I am, or if you think that actually it's important to you that your birth really does feel that way or that your pregnancy is that supported or that your postpartum journey is that informed, then do drop me a message and let's explore whether me and the team might be able to support you on YPJ on your journey too.